It should be bulldozed. It looks like something out of you know, the Syrian war. I was approached by a Russian. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about it, really. Welcome to the Department of Information. Four years ago, the iconic Waiwera Hot Pools closed their doors. As a kid, I used to visit the pools all the time, but I'm curious about how they've changed since then. Hi. We're making a video about Waiwera um, and wanted to talk to some of the locals. I don't suppose you'd want to answer a question or two? Yep. Yeah. So how long have you been living in Waiweta? Um, this property here, just on 20 years. But been coming here all my life. 32 years. Since I was a young baby. To live here and sort of look over there for the last three years and see the place just looking like a bomb site. It looks like something out of um, the Syrian war. It should be bulldozed. There's quite a bit of asbestos and stuff over there. It's decaying, it's rotting, and no one's doing anything about it. It, it started to decline about 10 years ago when it changed hands. The new owners were not really that committed to the maintenance of the place. About May, uh, 2010, thereabouts, I was approached by a Russian who was drinking our water at the Kermadec restaurant. And he liked it so much he wanted more and they'd run out. So he sent an emissary to see me. Mikhail Kimmich, aka the Russian, bought into the company for 50 million before buying the whole thing off John five years later. How did he get his money originally? I would have no idea other than to assume that it was black money. It came as a result of the carve-up of the Soviet Union. He did nothing right. He got rid of all my staff, he sacked the people that knew what they were doing and turned the place into a joke. And in the meantime, he went bankrupt and left the country and has since died. What was your reaction when you found out that Mikhail um, died? What a shame. I'll never be able to recover the money he owes me. The death nod. <laughs> the death nod. <laughs> this symbolised communist Russia. Of course, that's changed now, and I just feel that that's sort of part of a character of the demise that happened across the road here. It's just a little bit of fun. Do people ever break in? People break in all the time. There's nothing to pinch. Everything's dero, elect. It does attract some interesting people who jump over the fence and graffiti and use strange substances. I think people just want to get in there and have a wee look. I mean, you guys can go over there and have a look yourself and, and peep through the cracks in the wall. And You might even be able to get your camera in there. This is the kind of biggest crap you can look through. <laughs> if you had a drone, we could put it on. I find it quite fascinating why anybody would be that interested in looking at a derelict building, but there's been two movies made over there. What's it like living here, seeing this every day? I'm very sad to see the place in disrepair. I have another hat that I wear. I sort of like the ambience of, of it being a little quiet backwater. In a way, it's nice that why we're as quiet. Oh, we love it. We've sort of got used to the quietness now. <laughs> because say 10 years ago, you wouldn't get parking anywhere in the road. The balls are all hotter and they've all got more pressure but now that the pools aren't drawn. And I've got a, I've got a bore in my backyard there. Just here, I'll show you. That's it coming out of there now. And in about five minutes, that'll be hot. Heard also that there's medicinal properties of the water here. No idea. There's no doubt in my mind that the water is one of the most healing things that you can take. Intermittent fasting with the right balanced water will do you more good health-wise than anything else. What's the longest you've gone? I think about seven days. Why would a thermal resort is now derelict? A complete contrast to the pools I used to visit as a kid. Do 
you have any particular memories of when it was at its peak? My cousins and I, we'd go in the sea and then we'd go to the hot pools. Back in the days, so it used to be 35 cents. I used to camp where the pools are right now. That's a photograph of my mother and myself, and that tent is where the pools are right now. This is where the pools are now, which was a vegetable garden. Back in the 1850s, they used to actually bottle while we were water. This was one of the original bottles. Well, in fact, it's the only one that I know. We were open on Christmas Day. We made a bit of a special effort. The girls put Santa hats on and we handed out a few bits and pieces. The Queen and the Duke um, had lunch in the hotel in 1964. I remember my cousin and I going up and getting our photo taken in front of the Royal Rolls Royce. No security around. It was just parked in the street. I can remember vividly some of the, uh, the fun that these kids were having, particularly if the girls schools there were there when the boys schools were there. It was <laughs> almost the wild west of... <laughs> this is our Wyler song. <laughs> it's about Wyler. The new owners, Urban Partners, have said they're planning to reopen it, but at the moment it doesn't seem like anything's happening. And while I've moved on, the people of Waiweta have been left with the ruins in their backyard. Would you like to see it, uh, you know, brought back to life? Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. We'd like the place cleaned up. I suppose that I, I would like to see some public pools there again, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. You're looking at over 200 million to set that place up again. Ever since going down the Grand Canyon on a raft for 10 days, looking at a million years of erosion and a foot um, of rock and knowing it's a mile to the crater and thinking as you lie there on the sand and run the sand through your fingers how insignificant everything we may ever do in this life or this short time on this rock um, because it is all turned back into dust. <laughs>